In my last video, I showed you how to take a color image and print it out in black and white or shades of gray and then color them up with pencils and use them in your journal. At the end of the video, I mentioned that I was going to take these images and use them in zine number four. And I have done that. Now, I didn't use all of these images. I just used a few of them. I didn't use these. And I added a couple extra ones. I used these two images as well and colored them up and put them in zine four. So let me show you how that turned out. So this is the black and white version of the zine. And what I did was I took washi tape and put it around the edge just to give it a little bit of a finish. And I noticed when I made a sample copy that one edge was getting cut off. And that's because of that quarter inch that a printer or a copier puts around the edge of the paper. So I had to move this border in just a little bit so it wouldn't be cut off. And then I just glued down my images uh, the way that I wanted them and as you can see I don't I have score lines which you may or may not be able to see but I've got score lines here denoting each of the sections and I did not cut this I left the page whole I find that's a lot easier to work with so I went ahead and did that and then I colored up my images so let me show you what that looks like when it's colored up so there's um, the colored part, and I added embellishments, so I had some rub-ons right on here, some stickers, some stamping, and I dated it, and again I had just put a little border around this, keeping in mind that you want to stay away from your fold line, just in case you have any problems with it folding exactly. So I just move it in a little bit from the edge. I added some stamping um, with punchinella or sequin waste with uh, distress stains. Again, I colored everything up. And then on this side, I added a label with some stickers that I put in here. I did some, again, stenciling with um, distress stains. This is a bulldog clip that I just put on the copier, made a copy, and then cut it out and put it there. Some black and white, these were black and white flowers. I added some doodling and a sticker, and then I just colored her up. So um, to allow you to see a little bit better of how it looks, here's the black and white version. And you can see, like on these flowers, I just added some doodling in there just to highlight it a little bit. Um, I did this in the last video where I put some um, doodles around her glasses. And then the black and white on this one. And again, as I mentioned, I just did some stenciling. This was a stamp, put a border on it, and then just put the number four. So the good part is it really doesn't take a lot to embellish your zines, just a little bit. And um, I think, I love the way it turned out. I think it's really bright and colorful and cheerful. And so I'm happy with it. And you noticed on the intro to the video, I call, the title of this video was Black and White and Inside Out. And I want to show you why I did that. So here's the zine all folded up. And there's the inside just so you can get a sense of what it looks like when it's done. And you can see how that border, just by moving it in a little bit, um, make sure that you know it fits right on those fold lines. And then there's the, the back. Now the reason that I ended up calling this black and white and inside out was because, yes, we did take black and white images and color them up. And then what I did was do double-sided copies, and I put the black and white images on the back. And the reason I did that was for my friends that get this can either color up the images if they want, 
or if they'd rather just have the colored images already, they can just use those. You fold this up the exact same way. And there's your black and white. And again, you can add whatever embellishments that you want. And there you go. So it was a fun, fun thing to do. It's really, I'm sending this out to my friends so that if they want to, you know, color them up or however they want to do it, they can, can do so. But it was a fun project to try and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's talk about the envelope. Now, you don't have to make your envelopes. You can certainly use a note card envelope to send them on their way. I do just because I want to add some embellishments to them. So this is the envelope that is for this month, or zine number four, and that's the front, and this is the back, and it was super simple to make. I used the envelope punch board this time instead of the Martha Stewart um, board, and the reason I did that was because many of you were having problems with the envelope punch board. So I thought, I'll give it a try and see if I can figure out what's going on. And in fact, there is a difference. Uh, I used, I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit so you can see the size. It was a little too far. So you can see the sizes. Now I used the four bar, which my base paper here is seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And if you look at the envelopes, this was one that I made from here, from the envelope punch board, and it was the four bar. And this is the four bar from last month, from scene number three. And you can see that there's a difference. There's about a quarter of an inch bigger on the Martha Stewart board and about an eighth of an inch here and the it does actually almost look square so I can see why there was some issues with it so what I'm going to use this time is I'm using the envelope punch board but I'm going to go up a size so I'm going to use what they call the Gladstone and it will fit perfectly um, the zine will fit perfectly in here so here's my envelope Oops. here's my envelope and as you can see it'll fit in there just fine, not a problem. So let me show you how to make it. So we need to cut our paper at seven and a half by seven and a half, which for time's sake I already did. And this says that our score line is going to be at three inches. So I'm going to put this into the punch board and line it up at three inches and I punch and I score. And this is hard for a left-handed person because I have to use my right hand. And then you, you turn it counterclockwise and you line the score line, which is here, the one we just made, up with this little knob that's sticking out there, that little tab. And you line it up there, you punch, and you score. Turn it counterclockwise again, line it up to that little tab, score and punch. Counterclockwise again, line it up, score line to this little tab, punch and score. Okay, and that's it. So that's really simple and it's nice because it, it goes ahead and it marks your notches. So you don't have to cut those out like you do when you use the Martha Stewart scoreboard. So there you go. You can see Every way you turn it, you can see that there's, here's the two flaps that go up and then the side flaps. Okay, so they just go in like this. And just like you do with your other envelopes, you go ahead and make sure that you score them. Um, use your bone folder and make sure that they're nicely creased. Okay, so now it's ready for decorating. Just like that. So I went ahead and decorated my envelope just like that. So there's there's how that goes. And then when you go to put this on the printer, you if this is either a copier or your printer, 
let's just say this is the bed of it, and it'll tell you what corner you need to put your piece of paper in to get eight and a half by 11 inches. And so let's just say that this corner down here is where I'm supposed to do it. So I put it down there, just turn it upside down and like that. Okay, now one thing I do, because I did find that it was very difficult to line your envelope up again with the punch board. So what I did was I took Distress Stain. Uh, here I used uh, Vintage Photo. Something not that wouldn't show too much, but just enough. And I just hit the edges of those notches so that when I copied it, it I would be able to see it easily. And it's just enough to make sure that you can see it. And if you really want to age your envelope, certainly you could just hit your folds too. And uh, those will show up nicely, just like that. And that gives you even more things to make sure you've got everything lined up. Okay, so go ahead and make your copy. So here's my copy, and you can see not very well, it's very faint, but right here is a notch, and of course you can see right there the inch of the envelope, and there's a notch, and there's a notch, and there's a notch. So it, it helps you to line this up. Now I'm going to go to my uh, trimmer and cut this off at seven and a half. Just line that up. So here we go at seven and a half, and you've got that good edge there so you can see, and it lines up perfectly. So go ahead and do that. And then you're going to need to cut this edge, because this one's already flush, and cut this at seven and a half, and you can see it lines up, and you're through with that. Okay, now let's get the punch board. And this is where um, you're going to have to make sure. So remember, our first measurement was three inches. And here is the one that was at three inches. And if you can find that and line it up, that really makes it easy. So you would punch it and then just score it, just like you did before, counterclockwise. And then you're going to line, again, your score mark with that. And it should be perfect. You should be able to see that little notch line up. Counterclockwise again. Line it up. Punch. Counterclockwise. Line it up. And punch. Now the key is really, when you put it on here, because you've marked your notches, you can find your starting spot the first time that you measured three inches. And that makes it much, much easier. Okay, and then all you have to do is just fold this up and um, make sure you get a good crease. So you've got two ways you can make it and whichever works best for you or whatever tool you have. And again, just like I did in mine, I would fold this down like I did on the Martha Stewart board and glue that down this way just because I don't like that tongue sticking up. And then there's your, your envelope and you are ready to go and stuff it in a uh, mailbox. So now it's time for tips and tricks. Okay, here's what I wanted to show you for tips and tricks today. This is something that I do. It's, I've given you this tip before when you're looking at your magazines and trying to find images. But it's also helpful when you're working on your zine because sometimes the area, when you look at it in mass like this, it's hard to know if you have enough decoration, you have too much, um, until you actually fold it. And because I like to work on one solid piece, and I like to use cardstock so it's a little sturdier, um, this might be helpful to you. So we're going back to the frame idea. And all I do, this one's not exact, but I just kind of put it over to make sure, yeah, that looks like I have enough uh, detail on each of those sections. And then you'll see that I actually span two boxes here, 
and here and here. I like to do that because it gives you a little more room. And again, here's another um, frame that just allows you to get a good visual. Do I have enough? Do I have too much? Does it look all right? So that because when you fold it, that's what you're going to see is just that little bit, not the whole mass of this. So uh, I wanted to offer that tip as something you might want to try if, if this just looks overwhelming to you and you want to work in little smaller areas. So I'll be back uh, in about a week or so with a flip of June. And until then, if you have any questions, just leave them down below. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.